Friday Night Football's Game of the Week is brought to you in part by Felco Window Siding and Doors. It's time for a Week 8 edition of Friday Night Football. One, two, three, five. Byron looks to keep rolling. The Tigers prowling for the conference title. Plus, a couple of big northern teams try to stay in playoff contention. And the Nick 10, Ananiga looks to stay perfect with a road test in Rockford. All gas, no break. Holy Moses, it's week eight. FNF starts now. Welcome to our week eight edition of Friday Night Football. I'm Derek Bain. He is Sam Knox. We're just eight days away from the unveiling of the playoff brackets. Yeah, hard to believe, but there's lots of football left to play before that. Our game of the week features two of the top teams in the big Northern Conference, undefeated Byron. Looking to clinch a conference title, taking on a tough Dixon team. Well, Byron gets going early on. Ethan Powell's kill, a big part of their rushing scheme. He takes off and he is gone for the touchdown. Byron takes the early 7-0 lead. Right after, on the kickoff, Savion Johnson running it back. And that Tigers special team is able to knock the ball loose. And it's Isaiah Gooden who comes up with the ball. The Tigers take over. Once again, they take the ball about 30 yards down the field. With ease and Chandler Binkley is the main man here. He gets in for the score. Byron takes the 14-0 lead. Sean Constantine adding his NFL knowledge to his team. Byron gets the ball back again. Still at 14-0. Binkley with the ball. And he does not go down. Just a strong example of why this Byron team is so good this season. Later on in the drive, Xavion Johnson wants that ball back. Makes a great tackle to help his guys get a defensive stop. Later on. Who else? Johnson gets the ball to the outside. He goes to the edge, reaches, gets in for the score, takes a big hit, but it's worth it. This one now a one-score game. Well, not only can Byron run the ball, they can also throw it. Braden Smith, the baseball guy, too, finds who? Binkley. Duke can do it all. Great catch. In the red zone, they go. Soon after, Tangel Quach in for the score. Byron, 8-0 this year. They're big northern champions and stay undefeated. Final score, 52-35. Elsewhere, Stillman Valley looking to extend its winning streak to seven games, taking on Rockford Lutheran. Opening drive for the Cardinals. They give it to Gage Henderson, and he breaks off a big touchdown through that hole. 7 nothing Cardinals, and they're setting off the cannon in Cardinal country. Lutheran defense playing tough, though, as Colton Clark comes through with the big tackle for the loss, keeping this one within striking distance. Stillman Valley coach Mike Lawler watching on as the Cardinals quarterback, Kale Rauman, keeps it himself. Check out the juke move, and he's going to get down inside the five. Chris Big Berman. gainer there, that's right. Rowdy Crowdy always bringing the energy in Stillman Valley. Jory Spain powers in for the score. Stillman has just enough to edge this one out in overtime. 21 to 20 for their seventh straight win. Big one for them. Genoa Kingston looking to set up a second place showdown next week with Stillman Valley taking on Rockford Christian. GK already up eight nothing in the first when Nolan Perry hands it off to the fullback, Chase Engel. We don't see the fullback a lot. It's good to see that. He's in for six. <laughs> Cogs up two scores now. And their fans are loving the big early lead. Next drive for Rockford Christian's Keon Leach. He scrambles and GK's Colton Walter is going to force the fumble. How about it? Cogs. They recover. Two plays later, Sean Bracey, a Wendell. Battle his way into the end zone. Little guy, number 14, getting in there as he rolls in. GK, they roll 62. North Boone travels to Winnebago in a playoff eliminator. Vikings up big in the third quarter, looking for more. Chandler Alderman finds Will Dutch. Pretty pass down the sideline. He's out at the five yard line, and the North Boone fans made the trip, and they are making some noise. Alderman then on the other side has Chris Dutch to throw to. It's nice to have a Dutch on each side, and he hauls in the touchdown to make it 47 to 7 and starts the running clock. Lots of, a lot of positive stats for North Boone to keep in this one. And well, it was just this kind of a night for Winnebago. The fumble on the handoff attempt. North Boone's Hunter Chamberlain, the big fella in for the tackle for loss. The Vikings win 47-10 to stay in the hunt for a playoff spot. They need a win next week. They live to see another day. Oregon and Rock Falls both looking for their second win of the season. Booker Cross of Rock Falls gets the snap. Sees endless possibilities downfield for himself. There he goes, and his hair catches some wind as he flies down the sideline for the touchdown. The small but mighty Rockets fan section traveling as well. It's always good to see. Oregon has no trouble going back down the field with their offense cooking tonight. Gabe Eckert powers his way into the end zone. Oregon takes the win 29-25. Now we still have a lot of football left to cover. Next up, we head to the Nick 10. Hananiga looks to remain undefeated and clinch a conference title. They could do that. Plus, uh, we'll bring you a new edition of the Chemistry Quiz coming up right after the break. Hananiga 
Vega is the lone undefeated team remaining in the Nick 10 and ranked 8th in the state's 7A rankings. The Indians taking on an Auburn team that's coming off a forfeit win, so a bye of sorts for the Knights. Auburn, though, struggling with turnovers in the first quarter. They fumble it, and Hananiga's Aiden Peters pounces on it, emerges from the pile with the football. That sets up a little trick play on fourth down, the old Rockton special. The quarterback, Isaac Wisenand, ends up on the receiving end for the touchdown, and it's 17 to nothing Indians in the first quarter. The fans getting some early use out of those Halloween costumes. The Knights then go to the air. Bryce Goodwine is there and he picks it off. What do we call him, Sam? Be good! And he is very good when he touches the football. He takes it back the other way, not quite all the way to the house. He's down inside the five and it's another turnover to touchdown for Hananiga. Cole Warren keeps it himself. Hananiga wins this one 44 to 12 to clinch the Nick 10 conference title. Still perfect. Well, Belvedere North looking to get back in the win column after losing a couple. The Blue Thunder hosting Guilford North up seven nothing early when Mason Weckler keeps it on a great quarterback option for a big gain. How about it? Weckler actually just committed to play college baseball, so congratulations to him. Blue Thunder head coach Jeff Beck keeping his team going after those tough losses. Later in the drive, Weckler with a great fake. He keeps and then pitches to Nico Berolino for the score north up. 14 to nothing. Fans decked out in their neon tonight, cheering on their crowd. Very Have bright out there. All the bright colors, right? <laughs> Mason Weckler making another great play here, avoiding a sack and getting a chunk of yards for the first down. He is quite the athlete. And the little ones getting into the Breast Cancer Awareness Month spear with all that pink and the pom-poms. Final minute before the half, Weckler keeping it himself and following the blocks into the end zone. North wins 48-12. Freeport needs to win its final two games to get into the playoffs. The Pretzels with a tough task playing at Boylan. The Titans looking to add on to their early lead. Connor Dennis finds Dan Trotter for the big gain down the sideline. And the Titans looking to put this game out of reach in the first half. The Pretzels still fighting for that playoff life. They forced the fumble and recovered at the two. Teron Jackson, the Pretzel who forced the fumble. And Freeport coaches, well, they're trying to keep their guys focused in here and scheme up a comeback. Boylan, though, would get a safety, setting up this kickoff in the ensuing return by Joey Apino, and it's a big one. He's going to follow his guys, and, well, he's going to make some moves himself, too. How about the nice shutting of the tackler? Whoa. Get off of me with the spin move, and he takes it all the way to the house. Titans roll 56-12. to They knock Freeport out of playoff contention. Harlem looking for its seventh straight win, taking on Belvedere. The Huskies wasting no time getting on the board. This one, Adrian Palos finds some daylight, and cruising into the end zone for the game's first score. Belvedere coach Tony Ambrosio not liking that. Next possession, it's Palos again. This time he finds some space on the outside and cruises down the sideline, giving one defender the stiff arm on his way for another score. Husky fans are sure enjoying this one as their team takes a good chunk of a lead. And now, the special teams make the highlight reel. Huskies block, block the punt. It's Ethan Taylor scooping up the ball and extending into the end zone for the touchdown. Harlem rolls to its seventh straight win, 37 to nothing. They're playing some good football these days. No doubt. With just one regular season game left in this season after this week, these players have been with each other almost every day for the past few months. So this week, the chemistry quiz finds the Belvedere Bucks. So let's go with Aaron's favorite thing to get at Tom and Jerry's. Three, two, one. Boom. And I'm sorry. How do you? How do you? How do you even say that? It's not a euro. It's a euro. Yeah. I said gyro the first time. What is Caden's favorite team across every sport professionally? Oh, he would know this one. Yeah. Three, two, one. Show the camera. We got. Yep, Manchester. Man City. Interesting. So you're a big soccer guy too. Yep. That's awesome. I will say, I had Barcelona written down, and then I remembered it wasn't Barca since Messi left. The chemistry, that's what happens, man. You know it, you just know it. That's great. All right, so let's go with Aaron's favorite NFL player. Oh, God. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers. Yes. He still got it? Yeah, of course he does. He's bouncing back. Yes. What do you What do you think about the, uh, just the year in general? What do you do? You can you guys get past the NFC title? Yes. Defense is starting to look better than they did last year. Mason Crosby had us. How do you guys sweat him, huh? 
Yeah, but came in when we truly needed it. Got the all dub. That's all you gotta do is make the last one. Absolutely. Oh. Let's go with Mikey's favorite condiment to put on a Chicago dog. Three, two, one, show. Catch up. Staple. That's a staple. You guys want to be on this? No. Okay. Mikey's favorite field to play on in the Nick Ten. Oh, I already know. We've played them. Well. Yeah. End of the season. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a guess at this too. All right. So on the count of three, I'm gonna close my eyes and you guys spin it, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna say it. All right. Three, two, one. Freeport. Yeah. Let's go. Aaron. I mean, if I get it right and they get it right, it's it's both of us, right? I mean, come on. I gotta go back to that ketchup on a Chicago dog. If you put ketchup on it, it does not make a Chicago dog anymore. It ceases to be a Chicago dog once there's ketchup on a hot dog. Yeah, and I actually, to be completely honest with you, have not had a Chicago dog before. Well, we'll have to remedy that soon. Now, we've covered <laughs> a lot of football here, but there's still more to come. We head to the NUIC, where Dupac tries to clinch a conference title. More highlights, plus our play of the week when Friday Night Football returns after this timeout. You're Loud over there in Dixon, wasn't it, tonight, Sam? It certainly was, no doubt about it. Well, we head to the NUIC now, where Dupec knocked off Lena Winslow in a thriller in last week's Game of the Week, putting the Rivermen in the driver's seat for an NUIC conference title. Dupec taking on Galena, a Rivermen win, would give them the conference crown. The Rivermen strike first as they give it to Trent Hetland, and he finds his way to the end zone for the score with those pink numbers on the unis. Gotta love that, looking sharp say. in October. Two-point conversion is good, too, as Trenton oh. Taylor delivers it right up the gut. The dog days of summer may be over, but we are ready for fall here as Taylor goes right up the middle again. This time for the touchdown, Rivermen building that lead up. It's 22 to nothing in the first quarter. The two-point conversion is good yet again as Hetland gets in. Rivermen pad that lead to 24 zip, and Dupac wins 48-15. They seal up at least a share of the conference title. Dakota and East Dubuque meeting up with both teams looking for a third win. Homecoming King and Queen were revealed tonight on the field. A classic there. The Warriors enter the second half with the 14-12 lead over the Indians. The Indians tried to take advantage of several mistakes by the Warriors but couldn't. And look at this run by Bradley Huseman. That led the Warriors to the win. The Warriors ran the clock out to clinch another victory on the season. 22 to 12 the final there. Now our photographers scoured the area looking for the best high school football action. Only one can be our play of the week. We head back to Rockford where Boylan kick returner Joey Apino comes through with a big one here as blockers clear out a huge hole and he follows them and then well makes a few things happen himself. Check out this move as he finishes off the touchdown, spins away from the defender, gets to the end zone. Big kick return touchdown there. Titans roll 56 to 12, knocking Freeport out of the playoff chase. Just one week remaining now in the regular season. It all comes down to next Friday night for some teams. A lot of conference titles already decided. Playoff seeds still in the works for some teams as they try to get those uh, fifth wins. Should be exciting to see what happens next Friday. Yeah, absolutely. You think about the whole season coming down to week nine, you're a senior. This is what you got right here. I and mean, you, you sure are going to see a bunch of guys coming out with uh, some fire behind them, that's for sure. Yes, and we will look forward to bringing you all the action on our final regular season edition of Friday Night Football. Next Friday night, we will see you then.